I am a father-daughter incest survivor from infancy to the age of 18. Yes, I said the word incest, made you all a little uncomfortable, I'm sure. I've been saying it a lot. But what I want you to know today, that that's something that's in my past. That's my history, and it no longer defines me. You know, today I consider myself a mother, a career woman, I run a nonprofit, I'm on the board of several nonprofits, and I love adventure. But those things that happened to me in my past, of course, don't define me today, but there was a great journey to get to where I am. And I want to talk today about belonging, what belonging means, and what it can do for us in our country, in organizations, in our youth, and the way that we can really change the world. We've heard a lot about kindness today, we've heard a lot about choice, and I'd like to share this with you. So this was me trying to find my way, trying to find belonging, playing soccer, being Girl Scouts, getting my gold award, doing everything I could do to fit in, and everything I could do to find a way that people would accept me. The biggest problem that I had was no one knew what was going on behind the closed doors of my home, or the closed doors of the van, or the closed doors of wherever it may be. And so deep down, my self-belonging never really happened during these years. I scored a lot of goals, I stopped a lot of goals. You can see in this newspaper article, I got my gold award, equivalent to the Boy Scout Eagle Award. But yet something was missing. There was still a secret that I never was able to share with anyone and not able to find a place where I belonged. You know, this was me, a young little girl who loved the world, even though what was happening was happening. There are 700,000 of us every single year that child abuse has come out. Incest, child abuse, and so many more cases that aren't reported. As you all know, you probably belong to a place at work, you belong in clubs, you run nonprofits or businesses, your family, and having belonging makes you who you are. I had to really find in myself and kind of move through the journey of figuring out what my belonging was for self-love first, so that I could then be in a space and in the environment and in the world to accept myself and be accepted as who I was and authentically. This is the cover of my memoir, and it took me 18 years to write that memoir. It was a long time coming because there was so much that I needed to get out there. But this started when I was able to share my story with someone at work. My abuser was sentenced to 17 and a half years in prison, and I needed a day off to be able to show up there. So I shared with one person at work and said, this is what's going on. I've never spoken about it to anyone. And I'm telling you so that you can tell somebody who needs to know that I need tomorrow off. I didn't want anybody to have pity on me. I didn't want anyone to feel bad for me. I wanted to be, show up to, be able to show up to work and be who I was. And that person grabbed a hold of me, hugged me and said, I have never told anybody, but I need you to hear what's happened to me. And that was the beginning, the OMG. Oh my goodness, someone else has had this similar experience. And it just went from there. The stories continued every time I spoke. You know, the hashtag MeToo is a reality. You know, the, the, the reality is one out of every 10 of you in here has experienced either child sexual abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse, or incest. What happens when we can connect with people and understand each other, and when we can really accept ourselves that we're not just this oddball out, and we can find true belonging in who we are. That's what began to happen. And then I found myself talking about things a little bit more, being honest and sharing, and something I'm really passionate about is um, something called hashtag loud, so loving ourselves, owning our story, unleashing our voice, and daring to tell the world. And that allowed me to feel complete belonging within myself, be able to be my authentic self. If you were at the last TED Talk, I wore some pants. I had these shoes on, but I had this fancy sweater on, and I was so uncomfortable the entire time. This is me. Able to be in this space, this community, and belong in this environment. That's the difference. So Brene Brown says, true belonging doesn't require you to change for the world, but it requires you to be who you are. And this is what I would love for all of us to take home for our children, our family, the kids next door, 
and what I'm trying to do in several environments um, that are within my control. And I want to share a little bit more about that with you today. So number one, I was able to build trust with someone because I shared and I was vulnerable about what happened to me. There was a trust there, and I was able to really help someone else understand that they weren't alone when I was thinking that I was alone. And that spread. We ended up having a group of 37 people at this one particular place of employment who met at lunch once a month to just hold each other up. And we have this like, sense that work needs to be professional, and we have to have a certain set of clothes, and we have to leave our home lives at the door. How can you go to work and leave your home life at the door? Has anybody learned that through the pandemic? Right? Your dog barks, your kid's crying, the neighbor rings the doorbell. How do we really, truly belong somewhere if no one knows about you except for who you are when you cross the threshold of, of your employer? Build relationships and trust. Be, be vulnerable, and there's things you probably don't want to share with people you work with, but figure out what you can share because someone there needs to know your story so that they too can feel like they belong. Next, I'm the world's worst at this. When you're a survivor and you're a child that has to navigate how to survive through being abused, especially when your abuser's in your home, it's very, very hard to ask for help. You have to figure out how to manage and navigate the world all on your own. Um, especially when, you know, in my case, I tried several times to tell in my language. You know, we didn't talk about sex at home, and so I didn't have the words to say. And so when I tried to tell, adults had no clue what I was talking about. And so that only really made me go, continue not to ask for help, because they don't get it. But this is huge. This is huge in belonging. Being able to ask for help, being able to share the joys and the pains of life, it really connects that relationships and trust. So when we can ask for help and we can bring people into our circle when times are hard, then that means they're going to show up for you and you're going to show up for them when you need to. I really, truly believe in this to the deepest of my core and I practice it as much as I can every time. And the people who are in my circle know that this is hard for me and they'll call me up and say, we think you need help, what is it you need? That's what we talk about when we're talking about true, true, true belonging. Humanity. Boy, this is a tough one these days. We dehumanize people and things every single day. I've had several talk speakers talk about it today, but it's so very important. Everyone here, eye contact. Right? We can walk down the hall somewhere and just have eye contact with someone and help them feel like they belong. New employees, new kids at a school. Humanity, it's so important. It doesn't matter what people wear, what their hair looks like, what they do for a living. I've heard organizations say they introduce themselves, my name is Joe Smith and I'm a 27 grade. Who cares? In the end... Our pants go on the same way, we use the restroom the same way, and we're all going in the ground or in the crematorium the same way. I say, let's lock arms and lift each other up. How else are we going to navigate this world of, of wonderful, amazing things and also very horrendous, heinous things? So I ask all of you to really think about humanity. So through all of this, the way I've found belonging in these networks and organizations, um, is so different than it would have been 20 years ago, right? Social media, I can find networks of survivors every single day. So I ask you all, if you're not connected to people, social media does have good things about it. Help kids navigate it in a positive way. So Brave and Unbroken Project is my nonprofit. It's also the name of my memoir, and it was a way for me to uplift my voice and find my belonging, my self-love. From that, so we created the project to help adults know how to navigate preventing child abuse and incest. It's an adult's responsibility not to leave your children alone. It's an adult's responsibility that if a child doesn't want to be hugged, kissed, or tickled, to listen to them. Consent is a real thing for, for children as well. So our nonprofit is all about that. Out of that, we were so excited this year to create our first survivor's retreat, Soul Fire Weekend. And we brought together... 10 women who were able to come together in community, feel belonging, and have an entire weekend of healing together. 
That weekend wouldn't have happened hadn't I spoke my, my words at a dinner that oh, I'm trying to figure out how to make this happen. And that new person, I've never met them before, sent three text messages to a few people and we made it happen. And then Penny's house, as you heard, I have some children that we've, we've gained over the last few months. And it's all about being a launch pad. It's about allowing children and youth a space to figure out how and who they are. A place for belonging. When their mothers have kicked them out or they don't, aren't making it in school, that they have somewhere where they feel they, they are loved and they can learn how to navigate the world. All of these things to bring together belonging. And so what I ask of you all today is to go out and feel belonging and give your belonging away. I ask you all to look at each other, behind you, in front of you, left or right, make eye contact, shake hands, introduce yourself. And I guarantee when you leave this event today, you're going to feel like you belong to something pretty dang amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs>